Viewers, um, this is Art World presented to you by City News um, Television. Today we are happy to present to you um, an artist of repute. She comes from Greece and her name is Ntada. Please, may, may we meet you? At first, I would like to say a big thank you for this opportunity to give me to speak about my work these years and uh, to present my work. I really appreciate this opportunity that I have. Welcome. Yes. And um, where do you come from? From Athens. <laughs> I see. Athens will be Athens. Athens, yes. Athens in Greece. You have a very interesting name. Can you tell us something about your name? My name is uh, not so usual. Despina. Pronounce it Despina. It comes from the verb desposo, that means um, I, I dominate. Actually, it's the name of mothers of Christ, Despina and Maria. Maria Despina is more or less the same. Um, and uh, it's not uh, so usual in Greece, but in some islands they use it a lot. And um, you first trained as an, as an economist, yeah. then you studied architecture. Yes. And today you are an artist. Exactly. Can you explain these yeah. variations? Yes. Uh, well, at first I studied economics because uh, I followed... Uh, it wasn't something that I really liked, but I had my uh, family advice that would be um, good, so I studied it. I worked after taking my diploma, my degree in economics, in the Kapodistrian University of Athens 
Afterwards, I worked two years as an economist, but uh, it wasn't this that I would like. It wasn't me. So I decided to do to study again from the beginning what I would really love. So I studied architecture. It was something very close to what has to do with creativity, design, art, generally speaking, and that I could work in an architectural office. So I began studies from the beginning. I took my diploma. Then I worked in architecture uh, in Greece. I realized that uh, all this stuff creation it's in my nature i started dealing with paintings as well since i remember myself i was sketching i had a piece of paper and i was trying to capture and uh, depict a special object a beautiful object or a beautiful face uh, something that attracted my interest so i realized that uh, perhaps it was like an innate skill because I could depict the volumes and the perspective very good without having any actual knowledge or I haven't studied fine arts. Of course, architecture uh, helped me, it was a good motivation. Architectural sketches with lines and afterwards freehand sketches it was uh, easy for me to understand that it was uh, uh, something that meant to be for me. So I started doing paintings while I was working as an architect. Today exclusively I'm dealing with uh, art. Okay, so did you discover art as something you are motivated to do while you were an architect? And if you did, did you imagine that you can sustain your life on just what you do as a painter in terms of your income? The ideal would be to work as an architect or to have another job that uh, gives you the opportunity uh, to sustain actually to do your living and to do art as what you really want to do if you have time as hobby. If you are blessed enough, <laughs> you can be an artist and, and do your living from this. A lot of artists that are actually brilliant and every single time that you see their work, it's always a new, uh, you know, attracts the interest, you know, with the, the new techniques and you cannot imagine how, how many techniques and how many new medias and stuff you can use so as to depict and to present something. Well, this would be the ideal. If you can be an artist and do your living, it would be ideal. Mm. Tell me something. When I saw your work for the first time, I knew what attracted me to your work because I had to analyze within myself what I like about your work. Now, from the feedback you get from your clients and from admirers of your work, what do they say attracts them to your work? What they tell me and what I have, uh, I believe that it's uh, truth about my work, is that there is a balanced result overall, an aesthetically balanced result. Even if it's abstract work, even if it's uh, figurative art, if, whatever it is, I try to keep the balance without that meaning, uh, with a meaning ha has the harmony. Harmony in color palette, harmony in proportions, more or less, if I do figurative art that I love. I try to be, and of course, if you make realism, if you do whatever else, you can, you can imagine, you can change things, you can change proportions, you can change... I love realism, abstract elements, and try to combine all. I have changed a lot of techniques throughout all these years, tried new medias. The very first painting of mine used sand and glue. 
sand from the sea, this thin sand and glue, and I glue the sand on a compressed piece of paper, being compressed piece of paper, and the piece of paper glued on the canvas. So it has the texture of the fresco. So I start sketching on the sand a figure of uh, Egyptian goddess. Well, it was the very first painting that I sold. This attracted the interest to my very first client because it was, it was something new perhaps. It was too like this, but I didn't continue because it was very complicated, the process. Had the sand to dry at first and afterwards to glue and afterwards to uh, design on the sand and all the details and on linoleum and it was you know complicated yes and i continue with acrylic uh, and figurative art is what i really love it was a challenge because i would like to depict the reality but in a way not to be so strict but following the proportions following the rules the sandals the lighting for me it's a challenge because i haven't studied this so I discover every single time that I take my spatula or my brush, I start from a black canvas, having nothing in my hands, seeing nothing from anywhere, and I start designing something that I create in my head. And it's, it's difficult to, to put it in, in from the house. It's like from the house putting order and making the final result. And it's always women. It's the last series that uh, I worked, uh, that I worked the last year, 2021-2022. It's uh, uh, only women, fingers of women, that uh, the series called Sealed Lips, uh, the women, uh, all these women are, have something in common uh, some women have a piece of uh, like dress a piece of uh, tissue something uh, on them they don't have uh, faces or they have uh, deformed faces or hidden faces hidden by their hand or uh, their back turned to the audience you you see their back you don't see their faces with facial characteristics clear and uh, all of them, the, the way that they stand, they express a feeling. That was my initial concept, to express at first femininity, uh, beauty and gracefulness of, of women, sensitivity of women, but at the same time to uh, all, the, uh, all the various feelings and emotions they may experience. So. I believe that through their, their body, their, the, the way that they stand, I express the feelings that they have the moment that I capture. So all, 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 uh, some others have something like disappointment or despair. Some others, uh, like the very first paintings that I did, the woman, black and white, she's free, she's confident, she's, uh, she's not ashamed, she's um, dynamic, she presents her body, she has nothing to, to fear, so it's a dynamic woman, the sensual woman, the erotic but not provocative. Shows the femininity, the beauty. Other fingers show, shows other feelings like despair. <laughs> now these nude women as depicted in your, in your art, um, it's, not an ex it's not a political expression, but just um, a spiritual expression of... Yes, I try to combine actually both being feminine and with elegant movements. I tried to to put a plasticity, I don't know if there is this word, you know, in, uh, in exactly, you know, in their figures, and that's another common characteristic. I try to be, all the figures to be as natural as it could be, as I could express. But would you say your paintings were inspired by a motivation in you 
to be politically provocative to express the inhibitions placed on women by the society or it's just an emotional expression of womanhood it's the second one it's just a spontaneous you know way the way that women are the way that women feels it could be a man as well i chose women because women it, it's my nature at first i can depict women better than anything else but of course you can uh, extend it in whatever way you want if uh, somebody wants to make associations with uh, the the woman and the society and where women stands in the society but my initial concept to be honest was just uh, to expo to show to express the femininity the beauty the, the beauty only this and their feelings that they uh, the, the, the emotion that they may experience if you want. ask a question your um, presentation of of the the woman it's spectacular it's unusual it's so it's so there's something about it the morphology the movement the gestures that um is invocative of something where does that talent come from at first i started doing or, just or do you do you paint yourself uh, this is another question that uh, actually everybody makes this question they, they have asked me oh, so many so many people friends you know it's you and the paintings i mean that trying to depict yourself to design to to, to draw yourself no actually it's not it's it's not me it's just imagination that i have and i just put on the canvas to stay like this so re i erase i start from the beginning i i try actually i think that i have the figure live in my hand i i make the figure to come to life in my hand and afterwards i try to put it in the 3d dimension on canvas and i play with like this and i think this is that gives them a little bit more uh, intensity let's put it in this way but i try to keep the balance and the harmony now i am studying liquid art you know this is you know it's you know it's something that i thought come on you know it's not for me it's just you pour like you know the the color on the canvas and you use a um, sessual how we call this for the 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 dry dry uh, to dry the hair to to make this so like an explosion so it was the last work of mine like fission called fission fission that it was like a house it was with this technique so Alex, i always try to experiment new ways new methods you arrived in luxembourg recently from athens and um what do you plan to do here i had uh, contacted the um, uh, responsible person for the greek culture events uh, and we have spoke about uh, we have spoken about the possibility of an art expo for greek uh, uh, young greek uh, artists your clients are all over europe yeah. and you recently relocated to luxembourg how do you intend to um, keep them connected to you how are you balancing the business part of yes. your art oh yes actually i would I, I didn't believe that it would be so easy because nowadays with internet with online galleries with art that you can export you can ho actually a lot of online galleries can host your art no matter where you are where is your base natural base you are in greece you are in luxembourg you are in toronto i collaborate with everybody and the galleries that accept my work and host my work uh, they contact me when there is an interest so there is no problem where i am the problem is the transport afterwards you know i have to do all the uh the work of this procedure but you know it's it's nothing you know the, the the sense of happiness when somebody 
you know, choose your work, it's much bigger for all the other, you know, rest. Do you think you would have time to expand your um, clientele base to collectors in Luxembourg? I haven't ever thought of it, but I can continue from the beginning how I work. And if there is demand, of course I can, for my work, of course I can, I am open to do whatever, to, to go on, you know, proceeding, you know, and or even collaborating, you know, because in Athens I was collaborating with other artists as well, or um, uh, sharing ateliers, or say, you know, I can, but, you know, I am newly, uh, new, newcomer here, I haven't yet um, built my, uh, my, my, my network, network resolve, yes, exactly, so I, now I will try. It was this period of COVID that uh, ma make me stay a little bit uh, uh, back for the, this last two years. I'm open to collaborations or exhibitions and we will see with the Luxembourgish market as well. Do you have any expectations in terms of what you think um, might be suitable for the attitude of collectors here in Luxembourg? I believe that uh, abstract art is uh, something that is, uh, there is more demand for this. Uh, to be honest, the more abstract, the more good stuff is to, to present and to something that uh, is asked. Because art is not something like, art it's free, it's freedom. If you find the audience and the target group that you, the, the people that like this, you can make focus and work on this. I'm going to ask you a question that you might consider personal, but you are at liberty uh, to decline to answer my question. Some people have said to me that the, 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 the prices of your work is stupendous, it's, it's too expensive. Do you consider your work expensive? I wouldn't put it in this way. I, yes or no? It's the way it's. It depends the angle that you see it. There are exceptional artists that do exceptional things, and they sell their art for nothing. At the beginning, when I started, of course, I I followed this mindset this way oh i do something that i love why not to be in a low price or to be accessible to people so i wouldn't have problem as much as i work in this and i put effort and i put nights and days and uh, i give whatever i have in this i have uh, thought that um, yes price can be ca can't be so 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 low the last work that I sold it was a, pre a triptych that actually I sold it be be before even <laughs> before even finished it because this uh, person saw it uh, from uh, I don't know my social media I have a lot uh, other links or online galleries I think Fine Art America I have a lot and they co he, he contacted me and he told me, I want it, uh, may you please inform me from the pr price? And I told him, but I haven't even finished, I have done the all piece one, piece two, the third one missing, how you know how it's going to be? And he told me, oh, you know, from what I see from the rest, I believe, I trust, so, uh, so he prepared me. You tend to always paint in series. Yes, the last years, yes. At the beginning, no. So, why series? Is it that you have more stories to tell? Yes, I think that actually in the beginning I was painting just whatever I would like. Whatever I would like. Has nothing to do the one, the one, one subject with the other. Afterwards I realized that uh, it's more easy to make series, series not because 
you have uh, multiple stories to say, not only for this, but as well if you want to take, uh, to participate in an exhibition, it's better to participate with a series of work, to be, to, to, to be a theme, there is a, a theme, a topic. The last uh, three years I do series, series of six or seven uh, paintings, <coughs> maximum eight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, which is your favorite? Silt lips with the figurative, uh, the, uh, the woman, the naked woman. It's my, it's my, my, my favorite, my preferred series. Why? Because I think that it's me. It's, it's my, actually, all these women are not me, but their psychology is mine. And it's mine, one day I am like this, the other day, I am like feel sexual and dynamic and free. The other day, I am like despair or perhaps you know my psych I transmit my psychology in my work. Uh, this out out outburst with COVID influenced me a lot. So you know all this psychology of stress uncertainty. I passed it to my paintings. You can see all this in my paintings. They are a sound series. <laughs> Justina, thanks for inviting me for lunch in this favorite restaurant of yours, which is just a few meters away from your apartment here in Bertrand Luxembourg. Um, before I sign off, I would want you to tell me why you like this restaurant. I like the atmosphere here. It's, you know, like uh, countryside, it's country. For me, the combination of wood and glass and stone, uh, you know, in architecture, you know, as well, it's my preferred subject. So, you know, if I design something, I would, you know, use these materials. I like this and I like the, the way that uh, the service is very gentle, very flexible. So I have come so many times here not only that we are next to my house but you know it's a lovely place to have dinner to have lunch to conversation and all that yes that's all for um this week um until next week when we have an, another edition of art world it's um from me david Anissa. i'm saying good afternoon and have a nice weekend